to our channel if you're new here. Hi, my name is Angela and today we are doing an original tag. This is the Encanto book tag. I have been obsessed with Encanto for a while now. It's this beautiful family-centered story about acceptance and finding yourself and healing from heavy expectations and I just love it so much. I also love the soundtrack to this movie. It's one of my favorite soundtracks and I've been listening to it on repeat. So I decided I wanted to do some bookish questions related to the soundtrack to mix my two current loves which are books and Encanto. So let's get into it. The first song in Encanto is the family Madrigal, which introduces us to multiple generations of the Madrigal family. So the question is, name a book that explores multiple family generations. And for this question, I picked House of Spirits by Isabel Allende. This is a book that is very high on my 2022 TBR. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. I got it a couple months ago. I started a little bit of it and wow, it's a very beautifully told story so far. And I'm very, very excited to finish it this year. This is a story that follows multiple generations of the true Ava family and I've heard it has very strong complex female characters. There's hints of magic. This is one that I know I'm gonna love. I just have that very strong gut feeling. The next question is in regards to Waiting for a Miracle and that is what is a book you enjoyed that took longer than expected to finish? For this question I am going to go with The Dinosaur Artist by Paige Williams. This is one of my favorite nonfiction books. The story follows Eric Prokop be a Florida man who is completely obsessed with finding fossils. This is a book that explores the darker side of commercial fossil hunting. It does have a lot of suspense. The author Paige Williams is a fantastic journalist and she makes this story feel like fiction. Throughout reading this, I kept going, is this real? This is so crazy. And I just loved it. That's my favorite kind of nonfiction where the story seems so crazy that it feels even weirder than fiction. However, there was a lull in the middle of this book that led me to slowly plow my way through it. And I felt like I kept waiting for something to happen. I think that happens a little bit with nonfiction books because it's so fact-driven. You can't artificially introduce plots into a story. It follows the natural curve of events in real life. I was just waiting and waiting for the really crazy stuff to start happening again, and it did. And this book definitely delivered on that. There was a lot that went down in this book. If you love learning about dinosaurs, if you want to tap into your inner Ross Geller, this is the book for you. The next song in Encanto is surface pressure and this is a song that I absolutely loved. It's one of my favorites. I have a lot of favorite songs from Encanto but this one just made me really emotional. It's about an older sister taking on a lot of responsibilities. The prompt for this is name a character who has to do it all and for that I picked Margot from Here Comes the Sun. Here Comes the Sun is a beautifully written book by Nicole Dennis Ben. It is set in Jamaica. A lot of the dialogue is also written in Patwa. In this book Margot trades her sexuality for money so that she can build up a better life for her sister Tandi. She doesn't want Tandi to face the same fate that she has and she wants Tandi to be more and do more and she has this very heavy responsibility on her and she feels this very heavy burden on her to be that older sister that's paving a way for Tandi to live a life that's free of the trauma that she has had. This is a very dark, emotional, and heavy book. I will leave links to the trigger warnings for this book and the other books on this list in the description box below. So if you would like, you can check that out. It's a very heartbreaking book. It also captures feeling overly responsible and taking on way too much to just survive. In her own way, Tandi is also being crushed under a weight of expectations. She feels like she needs to be perfect, but she also wants to be her own person. I feel like all of the women in this book, whether it's Margot or her sister Tandi or their mother, are wondering what it's like to be free of expectations, what it's like to be free of their burden, and it's really an exploration of that. If you have the emotional bandwidth for this book, I highly recommend it, but it is one that will draw a lot out of you. The next question is based on a song that I can't seem to get out of my head, and that song is We Don't Talk About Bruno. The question is, talk about a book 
you haven't talked about before. I was thinking about it and I feel like I've mentioned a lot of my favorite books already on this channel, but it turns out one of my all time favorite young adult novels I have never talked about. It is time. It is time to talk about The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XRPN. This is a grief driven book that centers on Lei after her mother commits suicide. She believes that her mother has turned into a bird and this follows Lei's journey. Wow, is this a book? that just completely ripped my heart into shreds. It was also one of the most beautiful books that I have ever read. It is magical realism and you follow Lei as she goes to Taiwan. There's also hints of ghosts and there's this slight magical element. It's really hard to explain because the magic itself is unexplained. Instead, you're sort of immersed in the story. It also has this very beautiful seasoned prose. I had a hard time believing this was a debut novel. It is. Emily Pan's writing is lush, but it's not flowery. There's the right amount of forthrightness to this story that makes it very accessible and readable, but it's also incredibly rhythmic. And I love that about it. This feels like a story told by someone who has written for years upon years upon years and has written dozens of books. It is so mature in how it's told and it's this beautiful written exploration of grief. The grief in the story is not romanticized at all. It is told as is. A lot of the moods and emotions in this book are explained through colors, which is a very unique element to this story. It allows you to get a peek into Lay's mind as an artist and how she sees the world. I never thought that explaining moods to colors would make the mood feel more visceral to me, but it did. This is a very vividly written book. The author has a new book coming out this year, which I'm really excited about. I have waited years for her next book, so I'm really glad that we're finally getting it. But I think I need to prepare myself emotionally as well. I didn't consider that. I should probably start preparing myself emotionally for that book. What the songs that took me by surprise. I thought this was going to be a traditional Disney princess type song, but it turned out to be something different and very fun was what else can I do? The question for this is name a book that you thought would be light and fluffy but hit emotionally. For this prompt I picked Sans Tea Party. This is a graphic novel that I thought was gonna be super cute, super sweet, and it is all of those things, but no one prepared me for how emotional this book was going to be. No one told me that I was gonna cry while reading this. I thought that this was gonna be very cutesy. I was kind of expecting it to be a lot more like the Tea Dragon Society. I love the art style of this. It's a little more childlike. There's more looseness to the drawings, but I love the colors and the palette. It was very soft and whimsical and it drew me right into the story. This is a story about clinging on to your childhood and learning when to let go. I know the exact moment that I changed my perspective about this book. It's page 166 and I don't remember page numbers very often, but I remember the page number for this book because it just drew something out from inside of me. And then I reread it again and then I was like, okay, okay, I'm gonna start crying now. I need to get a tissue box and that's, that's exactly what I did. This was an absolutely beautiful book. I thought that the story was gonna be very surface level. I thought that it was gonna be just very sweet and perfect but it just hit me with that emotional depth. It just hammered it in right towards the end when I wasn't expecting it. And then I was left with this book hangover right after finishing it. What do I read now? I was just so emotionally hit with this book. This is a story about imagination, friendship, learning to love yourself. And there's so many wonderful, uplifting, delightful themes in this book that just got to me. This would be a very great cozy autumnal book to read. I had it on my fall TBR. I didn't get to read it in the fall. I wish I read it earlier but I'm also really glad that I just got the chance to read it in general because it is such a beautifully told story. I definitely made an assumption that was incorrect when I went into it thinking it was just gonna be a really pretty aesthetic perfect book and there wasn't gonna be a lot of substance to it but this one has style and substance. The next question is themed around my favorite song from the Encanto soundtrack. This is the one I listen to the most. This is one of the most beautiful songs that I've ever heard and I think this is now one of my favorite songs of all time and that is Dos Orguitas. The question related to that is what are 
are some characters that make you believe in soulmates? For this question, I immediately thought of Rico and Poppy from the Star Cross Sisters of Tuscany. This is a book that has quite a few flaws. I think I gave this around three stars at the time I read it. But that being said, on Poppy and Rico, are definitely a ship that I can go down with. I just thought that they were absolute soulmates. They were meant for each other. Their story just completely broke me. The backstory, the longing, the fated to be together aspect of this just really drew me in. You don't get to see Rico much at all. Really, it's the story is really flashes of on Poppy's past that are explored and explained. I just really, really enjoyed the chemistry between Aunt Poppy and Rico, especially love that they were older characters. I don't see a lot of romances with older characters. That just made my heart so full. For all of you, the question I decided on was a book that features rebuilding relationships. And for this particular question, the book that came to mind was Love and Olives by Jenna Evans Welch. This is part of a series that I absolutely love. You don't have to read the books in order. There's Love and Gelato, Love and Luck, Love and Olives. Each one is a YA contemporary that it's not connected in storyline but rather in themes. These are all travel stories that give you a real atmospheric sense of a place that I absolutely love. This particular story I am about halfway through. I'm struggling through the lull in the middle but I do trust Jenna Evans Welch's writing and her storytelling so I'm really looking forward to seeing where this goes. Liv is estranged from her father. She has not seen her dad in many years. He's an Atlantis hunter and he is searching for Atlantis. He has a lot of theories about where Atlantis is and she after many many years of not seeing him flies out to Greece to help him film a documentary about Atlantis and this is about her slowly very very slowly rebuilding her relationship with her dad and understanding her father better and the restraint that Olive has towards trusting her father also feels very real. There's another character that sometimes acts as a go-between and I just want to chuck his perspective out. I do really like his character. I just want a direct moment with Olive and her father. I don't know if by the end of it it gets rebuilt. I'm hoping that it does because usually Jenna Evans Welsh's books have very uplifting, happy, clean endings. So I'm kind of hoping it goes in that direction. The last question is based on one of the most upbeat and positive songs on the soundtrack and that is Colombia Mi Encanto. The question is a book that left you immersed in the culture. The book that I went with for this is a cookbook. It's in Bibi's Kitchen. This is a curation of recipes by grandmothers from eight Eastern African countries. These recipes are enriched by interviews and it's just a very well-constructed cookbook. This is a book that brings different cultures to your kitchen through food and it is so well done. You get a real sense of the place through the flavors and aromas and that's what I love about it. I really love the recipes that I've made in this cookbook and I've also really loved the story excerpts. I think they add so much depth to it and they really allow it to be a full immersion. Through simple to follow recipes, this book also breaks down misconceptions and myths about these different African countries that are explored. We get to explore places like Eritrea, Somalia, Mozambique. It took the time to challenge thoughts and beliefs through food. Because the grandmothers are all home cooks, I also felt this sense of connection to the recipes. They were very easy to make, but they were also incredibly soulful and familiar in some ways. This book is a complete cultural immersion through the language of food and that's what I loved about it. So those are all the questions for the Encanto book tag. This is an original book tag and I hope that you enjoyed it. I just really, really love the Encanto movie and I felt like a lot of these songs in the soundtrack really lended themselves well to bookish questions. And I got a chance to talk about a lot of books that I haven't mentioned before in this channel that I just really love. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below and if you're doing this video because everyone is tagged for this also let me know so that I can go ahead and watch your video as well that would just mean the world to me to get a chance to see you answer the questions as well and get to know your thoughts and what books you would pick. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys!